Today, um, doing a radio install on my 2004 Z06. Um, I kind of skipped some steps. Uh, I figured I should not take a video of it because most people have done videos on how to remove the console, so I'd rather not go there. Um, but more importantly, this is about how to wire the car and then where to place the wires and things you have to move um, because I haven't seen a whole lot of videos related to that. So we'll get into that uh, right now. The job. This is a uh, trim kit that I got from Harbor Freight. Um, it comes with four different little bars. I've had it for a while. It looks kind of beat up, but it works to pry out some of the plastic parts so you don't use a screwdriver and maul them up. This tiny like eyeglass screwdriver was for that amplifier adjustment. The little pick that basically get the get some of the plugs out. I believe this is a T15 for all the, uh, the screws. Little flat head just in case. Cutting pliers or a um, crimper tool, whatever you want to use. And there's a 10, and I believe this was a seven. Yeah, seven millimeter socket for the bolts and the four nuts for the console and that's all you need to do the job one thing to note too this is really difficult to see i got i have a huge led light in the back of the car so i can see what i'm doing these two wires right here go to the uh, passenger airbag light in the little plastic cover that sits in the console area here this was probably the biggest pain in the butt to remove i have no idea why there's a simple clip that you could see right there well the the peg uh, that goes into the clip of the airbag. What I ended up using was actually a pick similar to this and then I went on the back side of the clip, pried it up and then pulled it, really wiggled it and pulled it out. Um, it was kind of a pain in the butt, that was the biggest thing. I was afraid I was going to break the clip or the wires or rip the wires out. Um, but so far that's been the only pitfall of this whole install at this point um, and now I have to see if I have to remove that big uh, uh, bung right there where the stock unit uses a little rubber um, vibration dampener to seat the seat the unit and hold it in place um, so we'll get to putting a new unit, new unit in and see if I still need to use that or if I just have to bend it or do something to keep it out of the way and also to be clear, um, the two boxes that come, one is this uh, speaker wires, basically it looks like an amplifier. Um, you have the gains on the back side. I'm not sure what variation it is, but I just bought this the other day, so I imagine it's the latest. Um, but you'll end up with one plug that essentially goes out, it's white. It looks like another plug that's white here to the factory unit, it does not get used. And then the other plug that comes into this, what I call the magic black box. Um, that's where the largest of the connections goes, which is back here. So that's the big black plug that you take out from the stock unit that houses all the, the bulk of the wiring. Um, <clears throat> so like I said, I bought the Pioneer. I'm actually going to do a single DIN. They just came out with a really cool unit. Um, it's a, it gives you a place to put your smartphone and basically you use the, the app and you can control everything through the app on your phone So you basically have like a doubled in touch screen, but you really have a singled in uh, Interface which is kind of cool and plus in these cars There's not really a place to put your phone in the first place without putting an extra mount So I figured I'll kill two birds with one stone on this and uh, it has a Bluetooth capability It has the, the comes with the microphone hands-free sorry hands-free talking um, and has voice command, all that stuff. So it was, seemed really cool and it was relatively inexpensive for the whole thing um, in comparison to like a touchscreen doubled in. So I went with that, um, did some of the wiring this morning and then took the dash apart and here we are. Um, so if you're going to remove the console and then take the radio out and the HVAC, um, if you're doing a radio, I should say, um, I would remove the HVAC unit at the bottom um, because when you do take the radio out, together. So when you when you go to take the radio out, um, you don't really have much wire back there, so the radio ends up kind of laying on top of the HVAC unit, which then could damage it or scratch it. Um, 
So to prevent any of that sort of thing from happening, um, I just took the HVAC unit out and uh, put it to the side so I can access all the wiring. Um, so I did buy a kit from Crutchfield. Uh, I think it was like 35 or 40 bucks, but it comes with the harness. You do have to solder all the wires um, and the connections to the unit that you are going to use. Um, so I already did that earlier today. Uh, I wired up my, I got a Pioneer unit. So it has the plug with all the speaker wires and the power accessory, all that stuff. Um, and wired in one of those little micro relays for the parking switch. Um, <clears throat> and then what I ended up doing, it comes with these two boxes, uh, basically like an amp box. And then I have no idea what this thing is, but basically I'll just call it a magic box. Um, I'm gonna end up double siding taping these two together and then placing them in the back behind the cage. Um, there is quite a bit of room in the back of that. So you should be able to fit everything behind the, the actual HVAC unit. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and let me reposition the camera and then I'll continue with that. And another note, so when you get these two units uh, together and you get them where the HVAC is, you can actually stick them together. So I've got a piece of double-sided tape. I'm going to stick it on the one so I can stick the, the unit, both units together and put them back there together. Um, so that way there's not clanking around. Um, and then if I have to, I'll zip tie it to one of the wire uh, harnesses uh, to hold it all together. We've got the, the little amp and whatever that controller is stuck back there. All the wiring is nice and tucked. Basically you end up with your harness here that you're gonna plug into the unit. You end up with your uh, antenna wire. You have your HVAC harness and you have your cigarette lighter. That's all the stuff that's sticking out in the front. Um, and then I'm about ready to, to put the cage into the, uh, the window here and see where it fits and what I have to bend or move, uh, if anything. So that's up next. So when I put the unit in, uh, it seems to contact that little donut bung, whatever you want to call it, just slightly. So, um, it's not a super structural part. You can either choose to remove it, uh, just pop, you know, drill out the four rivets, or like I did, I basically just bent it by hand, uh, move the, the bung back. That way, if I ever wanted to go back to the same, the old unit for whatever reason, it's still there. Um, and all I have to do is basically bend it back, and then it should fit the old, uh, fit the old unit. And then that's basically the interface all installed. Uh, it's really difficult to make out, but you can kind of see where the that little bung is located under the under the head unit in the back. Um, and if you look up, you can kind of see all the wiring. Uh, basically, we're ready to put the screws in and then uh, test it out. All right. So the next step um, was to actually figure out where this mic was going to go for the uh, for the calling so you can talk hands-free um, so I've seen some people put it like where the gauge bezel is and I don't necessarily care for that because you can still kind of see it and I like to do things kind of tricky Ricky style so what actually I think is going to work, and honestly, if it doesn't look good, I'll get another like $12 piece, and this thing is not that hard to take apart. Um, is there's enough room actually in the the bezel around the surround of the radio that you can actually I think drill this thing out and place the the microphone in the back side of it and have it kind of be flush with the with the plastic. And with the both being blast black plastic and somewhat dimpled. Um, it should kind of blend in there and it, below the head unit itself, uh, you really won't even notice it. So I'm going to go for this and see if, uh, see if we, this will work out. And the other thing is the height of it is actually just enough that I, could, I think I could still use the, like the double sided sticky tape, stick it to the cage and put this mic in there um, and shouldn't have a problem. So we'll see. And then worst case, what I can do is always uh, bond, maybe bond this. Uh, whatever the plastic ball or if I have to bond this around to the actual plastics around here I'll do that as well but I think we should be okay using the um, 
the sticky pad with where the mic placement is. So I'm going to go for this and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, I'm super excited about this because this actually came out pretty rad. So there's the speaker hole or the microphone hole. So it'll go right into the bottom corner of the singled in. So it's almost, it's noticeable, but I mean, I think it'll fit in nice with the dash. It's not like it's gonna be this sore thumb sticking out somewhere. Um, so I ended up using a 2964 drill bit. Um, basically, it's just uh, big enough to fit the uh, the speaker in or the microphone in, but it sits between the actual uh, surround here, and it it's it's so tight. I don't even have to use adhesive. It actually came out just like I wanted it to, um, and I don't even need to use the little uh, foot that comes with it to put the double sided tape on. I'm just gonna leave it just like that, stuffed in and then uh, put the put the head unit back in and plug it in and we should be good to go. Um, <clears throat> what I found easy, I think I used a, uh, I think it was a 3 ace. forget. No, 3 ace has a little plate. Let's see, what was it? 2764 maybe. So yeah, so if you use a 2764, it actually sits right between the channel without basically any wobble so you can drill it right in in between and, and not mess it up um, so I started there and then I went to the uh, 20 2964 drill bit to get the, the the correct size for the the microphone so it ended up working out awesome and I think once it gets in there I mean you're not even going to notice it and like I said with the black plastic it kind of matches in a sense um, so it should it should stay in there never fall out um, and with the heat and stuff, the thermal expansion of the plastic should match the plastic, basically, of the microphone, so it shouldn't fall out when it gets hot either. So, pretty uh, stuff. HVAC back in and the head unit piece in, the singled in. Um, there it is. There's our little speaker. So, in relation to how close it is to my voice, it's probably about the same as where, like, the dash would be. Um, and actually, it's probably less obstructed over there than it is in the dash um, so <clears throat> I'm pretty happy with how that came out uh, meanwhile I'll get the rest of it fitted back in I'll do the power cycle like the controller or the amp suggests and make sure everything works before I button this thing up and then uh, we'll take a final video okay so one quick comment if you are installing this and using these magic boxes meaning one's an amplifier and one's the magic box there are on the back side of the one box, which is the amp, you can see at the bottom there, it's got little knobs that look like circles. Um, those are basically the gains for the woofers, I believe, in the car. So when I first installed this thing, uh, there was like no bass in the car, and I listen to a lot of rock music, so I like to hear double bass pedals. Um, but uh, yeah, so you have to turn up the gains right enough so that you get what the sound that you want. Um, and then everything should work out. But so far, this uh, this this head unit, um, this SPH uh, 10BT from Pioneer, the the functionality in it is is it's going to take me a little while to figure out because there's so much stuff uh, that you can do. It's pretty incredible, and I'm glad somebody finally decided to use the smartphones, develop the app, and then just connect to the radio. Um, because it makes it way easier and to make phone calls everything you don't have to worry about anything the power's on the speakers are working there's sound coming out and this is essentially what it looks like in the corvette so you got your hvac unit there and if we turn the lights on there you go and then you've got your cell phone at the top and then there's actually an awesome little holder here as well as the the main main head unit and basically uh, this is the SPH-10BT head unit from Pioneer. Um, you have to download the app, uh, but basically you can go into anything you want through your phone. And it comes with some pre-programmed equalizations for like bass, treble, mid, high. Um, so it's got some pre-programmed ones, but also it lets you go in and you can um, <clears throat> basically go through and do whatever you want to do with it. It's got the FM. Uh, if you go to the menu, you can pre-program stations. And this is all working through my phone, mind you. This is not 
necessarily like driven through the head unit. All the noise comes through the, the head unit and then into the car, but all the control is actually in the phone. Um, which is why I like this so much because your phone's in your car anyway. Nobody leaves their house without their phone at this point. So why not have a good place to put it? I mean, it's a solid, solid mount. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, so you can see your phone. You can do voice command through your phone, uh, answer calls, all that stuff. And then when it comes down to the uh, actual um, <clears throat> microphone, I mean, when the car is dark, you can't even see where I put the mic. So it's actually really awesome. It turned out great. Um, I'm going to mess around with the unit a little more, uh, and then I'll give you some more feedback on the head unit. Right, so this is all done. Console is all back in. Everything's buttoned up. You can see the, uh, the unit, the uh, HVAC controls, the phone mount, and then there's a little speaker microphone. Um, so that should work out just fine. It stinks that it's slightly covered up by the by the trim piece, but uh, whatever. It beats having a big old mic sitting somewhere. Um, but you can see the phone holder. So basically, you would just put your phone up in there, and uh, I'll go ahead and do it so you guys can see. And then what happens with the app? Uh, turn my light off here. So you go and you push your phone up in, hit the button by accident, basically if you were going to start your car, you can go to the app, Pioneer comes up, and gives you the message generally like all the all vehicles. Okay, turn the music down, turn the heater off, and basically that's what it looks like. Um, so it looks like it's almost like a, a screen from far away, but it is your phone, and then there's the, the head unit itself. All fits in there really nice. Um, I have a Pixel 2 XL, so it's the, the larger phone, and it fits in the, uh, the holder just fine. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with this. I think uh, once I figure it out, it'll, it'll be great. And the other cool thing is it tells you, like in the app, it tells you speed, altitude, and things of that nature. And I believe you can address that and also make it different backgrounds. So if I wanted to put like a Corvette picture up there, whatever, I could do that as well. Um, picture my dog, whatever. Um, but yeah, ultimately that's how it looks. Everything went well. I would, I would recommend the, the unit for sure. Thanks for watching.